people sometimes get confused and they feel that this destructive pattern is suggestive of the diagnosis but it is telling you about the aggressiveness of the lesion like the geographic part means like a geographical boundary here you can see uh, you can see there is a well demarcated zone and uh, you can easily make out how it is so this is seen in the less aggressive type of tumors the other is a moth eaten which means you have uh, various punctate type of uh, lesions which are destroying the bone which is seen into uh, seen in uh, fast growing or aggressive type of lesions and the third is permeative type where you see a complete destruction over a large areas and with multiple multiple uh, destructive type of lesion which is seen in very rapidly growing uh, lesions like uh, Ewing sarcoma or multiple myeloma so these are the x-rays on which you can identify them a geographic type well-defined boundaries these are the punched out lesions what you, you are you're seeing here and then in the last the primitive type uh, it's complete uh, destructive type of lesion seen coming to the geographic type of lesions they are of uh, one a b and c the uh, the first type which is uh, one a which means that the margins are well defined with sclerosis so you can see here uh, in this diagram that this is the sclerotic zone and this is all the sclerotic region. So this is seen in non-ossifying fibromas, in chondromas, in ABC, fibrous dysplasia and even in infections like osteomyelitis. When it comes to 1B, 1B means it has, uh, it has a, a lytic type of destruction but margins are defined but there is no sclerosis you can see here that it is not demarcated as compared to the previous one where you can see all this sclerosis so this type of type 1b is mostly seen in giant cell tumors coming to the type c 1c that is very ill-defined margins which is seen in locally aggressive type of lesions which may be seen in gct or abc so please remember what i want to say that uh, like we said that giant cell tumors have no sclerotic margins but even you can see in some cases they where it might present or depending upon the stage of the disease eval uh, evaluation once it is Campanacci grade 1 where it is well localized when it is Campanacci grade 2 where there is expansion but no cortical breach and Campanacci grade 3 in giant cell tumors where there is cortical breach and there is extraosseous component you may get different types of pictures. So we must be aware of all these types of destructive lesions and looking at them we can reach to a point of diagnosis. The second type is the moth eaten appearance where you see various punched out lesions what we are seeing here uh, on this pictorial diagram and you can see these in many cases like uh, metastasis in myeloma, in infection and even in sarcomas. The third type, like I said, the permeative type of lesion. So here you can see that it's uh, almost entire the epimeta and diaphyseal shaft is involved with multiple uh, small, small destructive type of lesions all around. So mostly it is seen in aggressive patterns like Ewing sarcoma or myeloma like that. Coming to the second part, which is the matrix. Like I said, matrix is the ground substance which is present in the body of the tumor. So osteoid matrix is seen mostly in uh, osteosarcoma or osteoid producing tumors like osteoblastoma. It is a chondroid matrix means chondroid means cartilage. The cartilaginous type of matrix is seen in cartilaginous tumors. The benign ones are like uh, enchondroma, chondromyxoid fibroma uh, and the malignant ones are like uh, chondrosarcomas. So you can see it here. So there are different characteristics and probably in subsequent lectures we'll uh, see when we go into the detail on the type of the tumors we will see how to classify them. The zone of transition like I told a wide zone or the narrow zone uh, here we can see that there is a lesion here but where it is merging with the normal one the pathological part is not very clear but in narrow zone you can see that it is very well demarcated and you can make it out you can use a pen to mark it 
where is the boundary of the lesion so that is a narrow zone to understand it in simple terms like if you see the triveni sangam where the three rivers meet there it's very difficult to point at one place and say this is the part where it is merging with each other but it's a very broad zone of transition a narrow zone like our boundary with international boundaries you know exactly where you are crossing on one side to the other so that is a narrow zone of transition so this is for simple understanding coming to the next part is the periosteal reaction so we know that periosteal reaction is the response of the host to the pathological process so the the pathological process tends to destroy the bone while the host the body tries to contain the disease by forming new bone over it so depending upon the type of periosteal reaction we can even identify what what type of lesion it is it is something like infection infective etiology or it is like a benign tumors or it is a aggressive type of tumors so there are different types of periosteal reaction broadly this is a solid type where you see a full solid type of reactions over the body which is mostly seen in either uh, infective processes then laminated which means like onion skin type where you have multiple layers what you can see here so this is seen in more aggressive type and then depending upon the histological type of the disease process you can have speculated which is like a codman's uh, triangle type of uh, periosteal reaction coming to the solid type of periosteal reaction where you can see here this is all solid like a buttress which is uh, uh, seen in many uh, benign conditions it is seen in uh, what do we mean by benign basically these are slow growing tumors so the periosteum has the body the host has the time to lay down thick bone and then it starts remodeling so it is seen in more benign type of diseases like you can see in uh, infection osteoderma like that when we come to the other part like we discussed the codman's type where you have this is the periosteal reaction which is going up and the laminated type what we discussed where there are multiple layers which are deposit uh, which is seen in like ewing sarcoma the codman's type in osteosarcoma and uh, this type of reaction this is also something like a speculated multilayered which can be seen in uh, ewing sarcoma the point what i want to emphasize is that by looking at the type of periosteal reaction don't just the histology though it is suggestive but you may have overlapping uh, types of uh, periosteal reaction even in osteosarcoma you can have laminated appearance you can have onion peeling type of appearance and even like a sunburst type you can see in ewing sarcoma so these are not hard and fast rules but of course these signify uh, these guide us towards towards what kind of uh, process is going on is it an aggressive it is very aggressive or it is a benign type slow growing disease which is affected the bone there are some tumors which are like do not touch lesions which means they are mostly incidental in diagnosis like many a times i see patients who are planned for tkr and when they do the x-ray they find that there is some this is a cartilaginous type of matrix what we see here which is mostly an enchondroma sometimes we see a sclerotic type of lesion uh, which is like a bone island and you can see a, this geographical type of lesion which is non-ossifying fibroma so these are do not touch lesions which means you need not even biopsy them if you feel, uh, if you find them incidentally on the x-ray and how do we decide whether they are do not touch lesion or if there is any underlying pathology so you have to be very thorough with your uh, history and you have to localize whether this is the source of the pain or this is this this whether this can be the cause of complaint with which the patient has come if the patient is localizing the pain and tenderness to the same zone where you're finding this lesion then of course these needs evaluation because this is a if you see this one so this is a cartilaginous tumor and in some cases it may be even be a chondrosarcoma grade one or two so you have to uh, take proper history to identify where is the pain is it in the muscles it is in the soft tissue it is in the bone it is in the joint and if uh, bone which bone and accordingly you have to look at so we will go into that later on but this is the broad overview about all these lesions